Hey guys and welcome to Dev Diaries. I want this series to be about showing you guys the game development experience and learning together. The reason I felt the need to make a separate series from the dev vlogs is because the purpose of the dev vlogs is to update progress on the game and to entertain. Due to the entertainment part, I need to cut out a lot of the technical details. The series will hopefully balance it out. Alright, enough chat, let's get into it. I had just finished reading Masters of Doom, how two guys created an empire and transformed pop culture. And that really set the state for this week of development. I'm sure you guys know John Carmack, game dev god. He's a mastermind behind Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Quake. Wolfenstein 3D was the first first person shooter ever made. Nowadays we have all these game engines that take away a lot of the complexity that comes with developing games. Back then, if you wanted to make a good game and be innovative, you had to create the engine yourself. Reading about all the issues you had to deal with to make a 3D engine really inspired me to push through all my little problems that I have now in this day and age. Age. So I got to work and thought of the systems my game acquired, and I came up with the list. Combat, skill tree, quest, dialogue, world building, characters and monster index description, and inventory. And I picked one that I wanted to work on. After working on the enemy AI, it was pretty natural to go to the skill tree. Once I chose the system, I thought of the underlying systems it contained. So for the skill tree, we have XP, tree layout, and character stats. So I started with the UI layout because I hated looking at this template. And that's when I ran into my first brick wall. I spent today on the stream looking up different tree layout algorithms because obviously the easy part about making the skill tree is not programmatically making it, it's laying it out. I messed around with a grid layout, didn't like it. Crypto in the chat made a very silly but interesting comment of using the physics engine to and so attempted to do that on stream with joints and it actually led to some very interesting results so we're gonna pursue that a lot more tomorrow Alrighty, right y'all what up tried to implement the physical tree with um physics but actually i ran into the same problem where i needed a recursion because as the children go down they need more space you don't know how much space they need la -di -da, la -di -da. i found an article online by rachel shout out to rachel <laughs> she explained everything super simple she broke it down she showed the original article that inspired her and i definitely want to try to get some implementation down so we can move on so over the weekend, I worked on the tree layout algorithm from Rachel's blog, and I managed to get it working pretty good, not perfect. There's a few things I need to do, for instance, when it spaces out the nodes, it doesn't center the parent over it. The good thing is that I made a separate GitHub repository for the algorithm, and it's public in case anybody wants to look at it, um, and I can just tweak that and it doesn't interfere with the game. The next thing on the agenda is to be able to load and save the tree through JSON. So it's not perfect, but it's getting there. Alrighty, so I'm gonna show you a little example of how the algorithm works. So for this example, let's take out this part of the tree and focus on just this subtree. So when we start off, there's going to be no spacing. All of them are going to be stacked on top of each other. Um, but for now, I'll just leave it like this. So each node has two important values. It has an X value and a mod. So I'm going to go through each node and talk about how we're going to change these values. Alrighty, so E, we're going to ask itself, does it have any siblings to the left? And no, since E doesn't have any siblings, we're just going to leave it alone for now. And then we're going to go down. A, does A have any siblings to the left? No, it doesn't. So we will leave it alone. Um, D, does D have any siblings to the left? So yes, it has one sibling to the left. So we are going to adjust the X to take into account its se sibling separation. So for now, I'll just say one. Uh, I then uh, later on in processing, I convert this one to 32 pixels because that's how much I want the separation to be. But for now, let's just keep it at one. Alrighty. Now, since D has a left sibling and children, that's an indication that we're going to have to uh, have a mod property because for now 
x uh, a has an x of zero and a mod of zero. So yeah, the way that we calculate this mod property first, we're gonna find the x value of b and y. So b has an x value of zero because it has no siblings to the left, and y has an x value of one because it has one sibling to the left. Cool. So now we calculated these x values for b and y. And now this is the equation to get the mod property. We're first gonna get the x value of d, and then we're gonna subtract it by the x value of b and y of its children. So zero plus one, and then we're gonna divide this by two. So what we get is one minus one half equals 0 0.5. So the mod property is 0 0.5. And this mod property is going to be added to the x's of b and y. So b would be 0 0.5 and y would be 1 plus 0 0.5 is 1.5. So now if we apply it to it, uh, 0 0.5 would make it here because remember this is 1. So 0 0.5 would be somewhere here and 1.5 would be here. Um, the reason that we put E in the middle, since it doesn't have any children to the left, there's not a mod property, but since it is the parents of A and D, we calculate, uh, the children's, the A's X and D's X, and we divide it by, by two. So that's why we center that. So yeah, that's how we use X and mod in order to build our tree. Alrighty, I'm not gonna make a full tutorial of this algorithm because since I haven't perfected it, I don't feel qualified to do so. But I'm just going to talk about the, the next step. Once you finish this step, you'll have uh, a tree that's fine. <laughs> not perfect, but it, it's fine. Alrighty, um, so in Rachel's blog post, this is the part where you're checking for the node conflicts of the children overlapping on top of each other of the different trees and i'm just going to talk about the general gist of it all right so how i do it is each so each node that has a bunch of children under it they have an array they have two arrays they have a left leftmost node array and then a rightmost node array um because what we want to do so let, let's talk about for e and f we want to check if the ancestors uh, or the children overlap with each other. So let's say for left nose, it'll be red and for right, right most, it'll be blue. Spider-Man colors. Awesome. So E's right most arrays for it, its first child D is the right most array. And then for the next set of children, Y is, which is under here. So you can't see it. And then it's leftmost is a and then b then for f it's right since it has one sibling it, it'll be the same for each it's eight and a a a if i can get this red that'll be great so it's the same so what we do is we take the child to the left and we take their rightmost node here and we compare it the with the sibling to the right their leftmost node so for instance here we have um e's uh rightmost node is d f's leftmost node is eight the x here is one the x here is 1.5 and judging by these numbers, there's going to be no spacing. So then we are going to uh, tamper with the F's X value and mod property um, so that it spaces these conflicts out. So there's also a conflict here, which it will also space out because the, the right and the leftmost are the same values. So you're going to have to add one to the mod and and whatnot so yeah that's the next step 
Yeah, let me know if you want to learn more about this algorithm. Hopefully if I can perfect it, I can make that video because this stuff is pretty interesting to me. I hope it's interesting to you. So Wednesday and Friday was all clear sailing. After taking off the weight of the layout algorithm, the normal game development was as smooth as warm butter. It really made me realize how important it is to embark on crazy problems that don't have a clear tutorial on YouTube. Because being in a dark tunnel and making your way out only with your own code is the best way to grow as a programmer. It just really forces you to write better code because it's hard to do difficult things with messy code. So on Wednesday I made the skill tree interactive where each node is a button and displays its information and the tree loads from JSON but not dynamically. I also discovered this amazing add-on to Godot that allows you to load color palettes. I highly recommend. On Friday I made the JSON loading more dynamic and made all the skills redeemable which saves the state when you close the game. For now the skills don't have any effect on the player. I'll save the character stats for another day but as for now i'm so stoked that we have a skill tree and it will be so much easier now to brainstorm the different trees for the gods now that we have working systems to prototype with of course the skill tree isn't done and the tree layout algorithm isn't perfect i wish i could conclude these two weeks of work with a finished skill tree but that's just not how game dev works tasks take longer than projected and you can't put all your happiness into an end goal you have to enjoy the ride as long as you've grown that's all that matters i hope you've enjoyed this video i would also like to give a big thanks to the patreons gregory smith velki clayman michael Schaffenacker, takumi svetliaka 92 and raziel and thank you for everyone who came to hang out on twitch have a good day everybody